Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I am still having a lot of fun playing with these paints here, so I thought I would do a little landscape on some round paper. Um, I don't even know if I'm gonna publish this video or not, but I just was kind of inspired, so I thought I would just see how these paints work on this kind of more traditional paper. I'm gonna start with just kind of like about uh, a little more than halfway up my paper. I'm gonna start just putting a little bit of a A little bit of a pond or, or stream. Oh, that's a pretty color. Let me grab some water with a bigger brush here. I'll bring that right down to the bottom. Um, I think maybe I'll add a little bit of this indigo. I'm just kind of, I've just been really, I don't know what it is about this set of paints, but I've been just like, feeling so free to experiment with them. I just want to make sure that I have a little bit of a horizon line and that it's level. The paint kind of flow into one another. I'm also going to try to keep my brush strokes, my little ripples, fairly level. I think I'll do a little bit of this, uh, let's see, this lighter blue. Did I use that one yet? Oh, I think I did. Uh, maybe a little bit of shadow with this kind of indigo color on the edges. I kind of want to put some of that sea foamy color in there too. I want just kind of like a almost pastel -y, springy color. Oh, that's really green. I've been using this this color on black paper quite a bit. All right. Bring that right over to the edge. Now I want to do some rocks. And I'm going to grab my credit card scraper here because I think I might need that. Pretty sure I will. Um, I'm going to do a little ultramarine. Oh, you know what? I'll do a little bit of that Prussian blue, a little bit of that iron oxide red. And I'm just going to start making some choppy strokes where I want some rocks. And then, oh, I just need a bit of thinner scraper because this one's going to be too wide for all of the things I want. Uh, actually, I'm going to give this a sharper edge too. to what to do much scraping, but you can give it a try. All right. I want to do some trees. I think I'll start with, um, take some of this Prussian blue, take some of this thalo blue. It'll keep it from getting too dark by using this kind of dirty spot on my canvas. I'm just, on my palette, I'm just going to put on this darker color, kind of to push things back in the background. Let the, actually, I'll just let the, the water float back there. I'm going to take some yellow. Yellow and green and get some colors back there. I'm going to switch to a round brush. And take some of that bright yellow and just kind of push just 
some of those shapes. Uh, and then I'm going to go back with a credit card scraper and try to scrape out some more rocks. that horizon line back in there. <clears throat> I think I might let this dry and then come back and add in some details and stuff. Just kind of see what happens. See what happens when we leave this, leave this be. Hello, I took a little break and now this is dry. So I'm gonna start by, I'm gonna put some branches in. I think I'd like to put some cherry blossom trees in our little scene here because I've been on a cherry blossom kick with these paints. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put one up here, put a few over here. Just just going to like uh, use this dagger brush just to throw in um, just a couple. And I'm doing kind of wiggly, twisty lines. So I'm going to do two on that side. I'm going to do one over here a little bit closer and larger. I like to use my brush if I want to have like oh uh, kind of like wiggly lines what I like to do and I'll pull it this way just so hopefully my hand won't be in the way. I would kind of like to just kind of uh, I don't know just kind of like barely hold on to the brush just kind of drag it along the paper and let it make its own kind of like branch shapes. I just find that that gives me a much more um, organic looking uh, looking line so barely holding on and then you have so many different widths and edges you can get with a dagger brush so I think that just works really really well for that so having a grouping of three um, also works well I'm gonna make sure I want to grate off the edge with that okay so I have a good idea those are going to be kind of focal points we've got this bigger one here that's gonna appear to be closer um, let me start this one down a little bit lower so you get medium size and we got an itty bitty back there. Okay. Now I want to get the water refined a little bit. I liked that pretty kind of Prussian blue that we were using. And I'm going to kind of like get an idea of where I want, how I want my rocks to look by kind of carving out the edge of the water, the kind of the, the shore. I, I like how we've got that granulation happening in there. It's probably from the ultramarine blue. Uh, so I don't want to like mess with that. I'm looking to see what sort of shapes I see from like just kind of left from the rocks and the shapes that I made in there. So I'm just kind of like uh, I'm just kind of using that as a guide basically. I'm saying okay this looks like a kind of rock coming out there. Let me get a little bit more of that color in there too. Even though these are not the most translucent colors I've ever used, they're quite lovely for layering. This wetter, larger brush. Okay. 
build some depth in our water. Maybe a little bit more of the ultramarine, just for a little bit of granu more granulation. All right. Now I'm gonna go back to that dagger brush and I'm gonna do some cracks in the rock and I'm gonna use the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber, make a nice blackish kind of color. And I am just going to basically look and see what I've got and um, make some like choppy marks and, and try to kind of compose my rocks basically. This is a really fun way to do um, landscape because it allows you to um, be really free and kind of just let the uh, let the the paints do what they want to do. I love the idea of just kind of like rocks up along the the shore. Just be careful where the water where you've just painted it, that's gonna be kind of wet, so you might not wanna let it blend in, or you might wanna let it blend in and get like a nice dark kind of reflection. Um, or have it look like the rocks under the water, you know how sometimes it's darker at the base of the rocks where they're wet. Like that, we can let that bleed in and see what happens. I'm always looking at rocks when I'm walking um, in the woods and on the side of the road. I love seeing like stone stone walls, rock walls. I always love it. I'm going to walk in the woods and I find like an old abandoned rock wall. You know, you just see kind of like parts of it. And you know, it must have been like probably farmland at one point, but now it's just wilderness. Now it's just like a trail in the woods, but it must have been farmland at some point. So now this here is shadow. Shadow under some greens. Do the negative space of a tree, just kind of let the trees cast shadow over the ground and over the rocks. I think I will take a little of that color into the shadow area of the water the base of our rocks, give it some more depth, give it some reflection, maybe even add a little bit of the Prussian blue in there. Just let it fade out onto the wet paper. Don't fret. If there's one, uh, one thing I want you to get out of this is just not to worry. Not it, it will turn out. It'll turn out. It'll be fine. Let the let the paint do what it wants to do. You are just uh, you're just guiding it. I really like that Prussian blue. That's a really nice color. Doesn't it look like a cool summer or spring afternoon? Oh, I love it. Okay, so like I mentioned with those branches, I had the feeling of doing some cherry blossoms. So I thought um, since this is a type of paint that, can, that has some opaque colors, I thought I would do some light pink. So I'm just gonna clean off some space around this little dab of white that I have left on my palette. I've done so many, I, I laid out this palette like a week ago and I've done so many little paintings with it. Uh, they've been so fun. I've really enjoyed this paint. It's the Paul Rubens Guac Eye Paint and I'm actually really shocked at how much I like this because when I first got it, um, I didn't think I would. 
I thought it was just kind of like a gimmick or it was just going to be the same as, you know, all the other paints that I've tried and, um, or these are, um, <clears throat> more Chinese style paints meant for like working on porous paper. Um, but I've used them on porous paper, I've used them on rice paper, I've used them on handmade watercolor paper, I've used them in like a traditional, uh, paper and they have just been so delightful. Um, I just, I have been so, having so much fun just being so inspired using these. They're, they're, they're very easy to use too, which is, which is kind of fun. All right, so I know this color is, this paint is pretty opaque, so I am just going to dab on, I'm going to dab on my cherry blossoms, and all they're going to look like is just dabs, because they're so far away. I think I will need more just white, so I'm just going to get right into that little dry dab. And um, I let the palettes dry down on my palette, the, the paints dry down on my palette, so uh, they do reactivate very well, which is nice. I'm going to go a little bit, um, I think I'm going to do more lighter color over here, I'm going to a little darker back there. So these definitely um, have some like wash light capabilities, being able to do light over dark. I don't know if I'd recommend this for beginners just because um, I think it's a really good habit to get used to doing, um, you know, reserving whites and working with transparent colors, but these are really fun. They're really fun to play with. And, and I find them to be very easy to use. But they could be because like my first paints were actually Marie's Chinese colors. That was back in like the early 80s before Marie's kind of started making really kind of cheap, uh, low quality paints. And, and I think the China colors are still pretty decent, but, um, but that could be why I'm kind of used to them. I think I want to have a little bit of blue in that pink. I'm going to take some of this kind of sky blue here. I feel like I just need a little bit of that more uh, dust. I need to make it kind of like a gray lavender or dusty rose kind of color on some of these. I just feel like it needs that cooler light. Need a little bit more blue. stronger and some of the wetter dabs dab in some stronger color let it um, let it flood out a little bit and then back there I'm going to do a little bit of this kind of Bordeaux color mute it a little bit We have a little contrast between that and the other, the other tree. Help it push in the background a little bit more. And a lot of the branches will get kind of covered up. I had a sponge out here. I don't know if I style this big one. I wonder if I have any little sponges. Oh, I do. I feel like I need really a little sponge. I'm going to take some yellow. These sea sponges will last you forever. They're, um, you just rinse them out, wash them out when you're done. And if, and always add water to them before you use them. This is kind of cool. I'm kind of liking this. I feel like I need a little bit more contrast on those, but I'm gonna let this dry to see how light the petals are when we're when we're done. And uh, when we come back, we will finish it up. 
I did add a little bit more of that brighter golden yellow, uh, warmer yellow here to help things come forward. And then I thought, you know what, what if I used a different sponge and sponged on that tree? So I've got a larger, coarser sea sponge here. I'm actually just going to spray it with water because my water, uh, my water uh, buckets are a little bit um, gross right now. But I thought I could get a better, um, like, more random, oops, I just... Got water on there. Um, look there. And I did put out a little bit of fresh white paint on my palette. So let's see what we can, what I can get. I think this might look a little bit better actually. Uh, maybe a little bit there. This is going to use up your paint faster though, so just kind of kind of keep that in mind. I like to let it reach over the over the uh, stream a little bit and then I'll do a few over here on that closer tree, I think. So maybe pick up a little bit of the red. tree and back. A little bit of that red there. Maybe you pick up, maybe kind of smush it in with the white I already have. And that should stay pretty opaque. There. Um, now I can go in with the brush. I'll rinse that off really well in the sink upstairs. Now I can go back in with a round brush and maybe even a, um, a more blunt one. And see what I can do there. Let's see if I can kind of like guide the branches a little bit. Make them clump a little bit better so that they, uh, the leaves appear to be kind of coming off of a branch and not just hovering in the ether. Okay, I don't want quite as much definition over here, but I do just want to have a little bit of a little bit of a uh, just a little bit of um, I don't know structure there, and then I'm gonna go back in with the brown and get our tree branches back. So we kind of lost our tree branches a little bit. Just on the front one, I don't need to on the other ones. I just need to like, maybe even thicken up the tree trunk here. Give it kind of like a, almost a bonsai type look, except big. <laughs> And I need contrast for that. And this will give the picture a little bit of scale. It'll give this tree a little bit more prominence. I'm thicken up the trunk on that one as well. Give it a little bit of not a ton of detail, but a little bit. Now I feel like I just need like a little bit of detail in the foreground, like maybe some reeds or reeds or some sort of grass that ochre color is really opaque so if I add that into my phthalo green I'll get um, I'll get a more opaque uh, a more opaque paint and I think I'm just going to put in some like uh, this grass is kind of coming off the bottom of the right off the bottom of the page. Yeah, you know, like start some high, maybe make like one with like a little bend. Just 
give it kind of like a secret garden hidden vibe to it. Like they're standing on the edge of this little little pond. I kind of like that. I think that works. It's kind of fun. A nice little uh, round landscape. What do you think? You can let me know in the comments below. But there we have it. Uh, it was fun to paint and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy crafting!